Hey, hey everybody, this is day 21 of the 30 day Lico challenge. Uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, but hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit all the buttons you like. Leave a comment. What do you think about today's uh, problem? Uh, should be a new problem, so I'm really excited. Let's see. Uh, okay, refresh first, maybe. Uh, okay. All right, there you go. Uh, yeah, okay. Waiting for it to load. Do, 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 do. <laughs> How's your day? <laughs> uh, leftmost column with at least a one. This problem is an interactive problem. Oh, interesting. A binary matrix means that all the elements are zero or one. Uh, for each individual row of the matrix, this row is sorted in a non-decreasing order. Given a row sorted binary matrix binary matrix, uh, return leftmost column index with at least one one in it. If such an index doesn't exist, return negative one. You can't access the binary matrix directly. You may only access the matrix using a binary matrix interface. Uh, there's a getter that returns the xy thing, uh, the dimension that gets the list of the two dimensions, n and m. Uh, submission taking, or submissions should, should uh, take fewer than a thousand calls. Uh, for custom testing purposes, you're given the matrix mat as input in the following four examples. You now have as the binary matrix directly. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at the examples real quick just to kind of get a little bit of a visualization. Um, and okay, why is this zero? Zero is the leftmost column index values. Okay, that seems fair. Uh, okay, that also seems good. Uh, okay, negative one if they're all zeros. Um, okay. Hmm. Uh, and there's some hints, which obviously, uh, at least maybe, I, I'm not going to click on them quite yet. Um, yeah, so the N and the M is going to be less than 100, but let's start by getting it. I mean, I think there's no harm in getting the dimensions. Uh, and M is equal to binary matrix dot dimensions. Okay, so that should be, okay, let's just put it out because this is an interactive problem. I'm not quite sure, you know, so that's, okay, so that does print out correctly. I uh, just wanted to make sure that uh, we're using the L APIs correctly. Uh, so they're probably, um, so these are sorted uh, in non-decreasing order, right? So what does that mean? Uh, that means the, um, the, the row on the bottom, uh, or the last row, uh, will always have the first one, right? It's not picture. I'm just, to be honest, I, I, I do have a sense that that's true. But if that's true, that seems pretty trivial. So I'm just trying to think. Right, or maybe I'm missing something with the API. Um, so my, so just to articulate my thoughts a little bit more is that uh, what I think about is just do a do a linear scan on the bottommost row, and then whatever column that returns a one, that's the answer, right? Am I? Uh, I'm just trying to think about what. Uh, so I think that, I mean, my intuition would be that this is correct because if this is sorted and this is a binary, and this, yeah, uh, non-decreasing order, so that means that, um, so I, my intuition that that would be correct, but that seems too easy and that's why I'm second guessing it a little bit uh, for now. But let's, let's do that and then maybe let's try it uh, and then we'll, we'll see. Um, okay, so now that's four. Uh, so n is the number of rows, so we want the nth minus one row, I think, depending on zero indexed or not. Uh, it actually does, oh no, zero indexed, okay. So n minus one row, and then we start with m is equal to zero, and then you keep on going from left to right. Is that, okay, Let, let's try that, but um, yeah. For cars is equal to uh, in range of, uh, I guess just from zero to m. Uh, if binary matrix dot get n minus one, and then call. Well, this is call, not calls. Um, column. Uh, then return call. 
otherwise else return negative one. Hmm. Uh, okay. Well, let's make some effort and put into example cases. That was the same example cases. I <laughs> really double checking that one. <laughs> uh, zero cases is pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick submit, but I'm not sure I understand. So I, if I get a wrong answer, that not that bad because then maybe I have to understand this uh, problem a little bit because I think maybe I misunderstand some parts of this. Uh, okay, so definitely there's some uh, things here. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Uh, so I seems like I misunderstood the problem, but that's fine because I was really confused about it uh, and. During the contest, I might make maybe uh, take some time to reread it a little bit, but f since this is not a contest, I could take a look real quick um, to see what's going on. Uh, I think I just misunderstood what they meant by none. Uh, oh, I see. So for each row of the matrix, this row is sorted in non decreasing order. Not that uh, between each row, there they're non-decreasing. Okay, so that's why you have an input like this. I wish they at least just showed like one, one, um, one case where that is, um, yeah, just one case would have been very illustrating uh, because I think th this is just not, hmm, I don't know, maybe I just have trouble reading this one. That's fine. Okay, so now given this, uh, we obviously need another algorithm. Uh, okay, hmm. So I think, okay. So there are a couple of things I'm thinking of right now. Uh, because this is non-decreasing, there's clearly a binary search for each row. And then you can use that to kind of um, get n log n uh, for each of, or n log m. Um, but yeah, and that should be good enough. Um, because uh, log 100 is not that, oops. Because uh, 2 to the 10 is, um, 2 to the 10 is 1,000, right? So, and this is way less than 2 to the 10. So, um, and because we have 1,000 cores, for each row we're making less than 10 cores, that's good enough. So let's do that and, uh, and kind of think about different ways to optimize. I think I just misread this problem very well, but that's okay. Um, because when I said whenever I'm not increasing, I think I it's okay. Uh, I do wish that they had one example so that you know just for learning. Per I mean, I don't know just to disambiguate what you mean because this is not a hard problem. The hardest part about this problem is reading comprehension a little bit uh, and asking what they what would you think they want. Um, yeah. So now for let's just say for row in range of n. Um, I think this is mocking up the auto intent a little bit. Uh, and then now let's just get, um, with this we could do, let's just use a helper function. Um, so let's just say column is equal to, I don't know, find row, right? And we want the earliest, yeah, the earliest index. So, um, yeah, so let's just say best is equal to infinity, infinity and beyond. Um, and then now at the end we're going to return that. Well, but only if if best is equal to infinity, then return negative one. Otherwise, just return best. Otherwise, now best is equal to min of best and the column. And then we are done. Kind of. <laughs> I mean, we have to write the find function, which we said uh, would be the be the binary search um, and yeah and now we can uh, have a very straightforward binary search function right we have a left is equal to zero uh, right is equal to uh, m yeah m minus one say uh, and I 
called invariant syntax. Um, and then now, while left is left is less than right, um, okay, let's just say middle is equal to left plus right over two, and we might have to be a little bit careful about uh, exactly, um, you know, off by one arrows and stuff like this. Uh, and this is literally a custom made for binary search because it is literally zeros, which is false, and then at some point it gets to one, right? So, uh, so we can do this. Okay, actually, I want to make this not inclusive, uh, and then now, um, yeah. So then, if uh, binary matrix uh, was a get get uh, the row of the middle is uh, now this is equal to zero. What does that mean? If the middle is zero, then that means um, that means the one starts to the right of it, right? So left is equal to middle plus one. Uh, else, uh, the right is equal to the middle. Because if it's one, then it's including. Uh, I always have to double check because I otherwise I always get off by one. So I'm just mentally checking if the middle has a one in it then that means that, um, yeah, that means we still want to consider the right. So, okay, that's good. Um, okay. And then now we just have to return, okay, what do we return? Uh, is it left plus one or left? Uh, so, in this case, uh, left will be equals to right, so I guess it doesn't really matter. But uh, this is the first case, which is, is true, so that's so that should be okay. Uh, and now let's okay. My our test case is already in. Let's run it real quick. Um, okay. No, oh, it just rises to. Oh, uh, we have to handle the case where um, left is equal to basically n. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's why. I mean, right now, this, this is not that bad. This is not that hard. I'm just trying to figure out uh, the cleanest way to uh, write this. Um, like, whether, like what, what, what's a more natural... Um, case right is it the end of the array or infinity maybe it's inf maybe the end of the way is reasonable too so let's do that so oops uh cool and then now let's now that we really understand what's going on let's try uh uh some other functions okay oh, just Take this one and copy and paste and then add more, maybe. Um, it is binary search, so I think there are not that many edge cases, to be honest, um, other than off by one type things. Let's try an empty array, uh, and then let's try a one element away, one element away with zero, uh, and oh, oh, they do have a thingy. So okay, so we don't have to worry about this case then. Even better. Um, cool. Okay, cool. I uh, accepted. So that was pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, as as long as you're able to read the poem correctly, unlike I did, um, I think I just missed. I mean, I eh, I think one example. I mean, I blame a little bit on the examples, but it's really my fault. Uh, but one example would have cleared up a lot what they really meant. Um, like I like it should not be a trick that uh, like what what my assumption was should not have been a trick if that was not the right poem. I just think I misread um, the statement where uh, I think. I was thinking that between rows they're sorted, uh, which is not 
what their intent intent is. Uh, but I think they should focus on you know writing the queen palm and not just tricking people who have reading issues like me. But uh, but yeah, uh, in terms of uh, good palm, I mean, I mean I, I understand why they uh, give you this interface because well one is that it probably approximates. Uh, an interview process more uh, closely, and that they're like, okay, they're you said just saying, okay, can you implement this in, you know, uh, uh, non non brute force uh, or whatever in a way that, um, you know, uh, and this is just like a, this is just more of a construct that um, that Leadco has uh, because in real life, if, if they might just give you this problem and then you might start with brute force and be like, okay. Now can you do better, right? Uh, where, uh, in terms of timing, sometimes they cannot uh, take that out or force that out in an easy way, uh, especially across different languages. So I wouldn't worry necessarily about the weird construct. Uh, but that said, this is a very uh, standard binary search problem, uh, and to kind of analyze the complexity a little bit uh, for each row, we call this finder, which uh, operates on all of log n operations. Or sorry. All of log m operations because there's n and m, uh, so so all this will take all of uh, n times m. Uh, that's pretty straightforward and easy, uh, and we don't use any extra data uh, uh, storage. This is all of one for storage. Like we, you know, you could you could literally see all the things we're using for storage here. So it's pretty good. Uh, I think one thing that was a little um, and some of this is just because I've solved too many problems, maybe, uh, in a weird way. Uh, because when I was thinking about it, I thought they, that um, there was some weird... Uh, there are a couple of problems where you have to walk the diagonal to calculate um, certain things of these type of grids where it's already sorted in a non-decreasing order, and that's why I kind of was leaning the way that I did. I thought it was that type of problem when this is actually even more fundamental. Uh, but overall, uh, binary search is something that you definitely need to practice on. I need to practice on. I I I have issues of these off by one. So even if you know it's binary search, make sure you code it up, practice it, and make sure you understand why um, all the edge case conditions. Because I, even I went into it from time to time, and you could even watch it on other videos on stream where I'm like, oh, I know it's binary search, but now I have an off by one, and I'm not fixing it quite well. Um, but yeah, overall, um, yeah, overall. You know, binary search is something that you should know, and uh, I've definitely gotten interview problems on binary search before, and I've definitely also gotten uh, off by one issues, as I keep mentioning, because it's something that has happened and maybe scarred me a little bit. But uh, so definitely recommend it. Definitely recommend practicing. There are a lot of similar problems, and they all kind of um, for these grid type e things where you have like zero and ones. I think th well, some of these could be binary search, but uh, the other type of problems I see is that there's some like interactions where uh, the naive algorithm is very obvious. It's like O of n times m. Uh, but if you walk the uh, grid in an intelligent way, then you could get it down to O of n plus m in a lot of those problems. Uh, search those out. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, if you know those problems. Uh, but th that's where my mind was leaning. But yeah, for this problem, otherwise it's straightforward if you had read this correctly, unlike I did. But uh, but yeah, that's all I have for this problem. Uh, and uh, in terms of cleaning code, I mean it's. No, the binary search can really clean it that much more, and this is just a for loop. So, in terms of clean code, there's not really much to clean your code except for maybe better variable names <laughs> and an M is given to you, and it's very mathematical, so maybe that's okay. Some people go by M and N instead of the dimensions, which also makes sense. But, uh, but so, uh, so I actually been, I've been one thing that I've been using uh, lately, which I haven't here. Uh, and I was debating a little bit, but it's defined in the problem, so it's a, so I just wanted to be consistent. But what I've been doing lately is just call it rows and columns, and you know, there's there's no way to confuse that, and that's uh, or, well, it's harder to confuse that. That's the way that I would take an approach on. Uh, but yeah, overall, that's all I have for this problem. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for tomorrow for uh, another Leco problem, and I'll see y'all later. Bye bye.